Good morning, my fellow friends, my fellow believers, my fellow Americans. Good morning to you this Sunday morning. What a wonderful privilege to praise the good Lord on Sunday and in every day of our lives. And this morning, my dear friends, we have the subject, the essence of our faith. From the studios of the Evangelist Ministry, we spread the good news about Jesus Christ and His saving grace. Our mission, my dear friends, the mission of this ministry is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. If in this morning, my dear friends, you have your Bible available, let's open the, the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. The Bible reads this way, my friends. We who are Jew by nature and not sinners of, of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the words of the law. For by the words of the law shall not flesh will be justified. My dear friends, the subject of this morning is the essence for faith. But let's think about this way, my friends. The Father's salvation plan to clean the stain of our sin and reconcile us to Him doesn't require all good works. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, said, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. But my dear friend, we can come back and read the text. In chapter and uh, verse 16. The Bible said this way, knowing that a man is justified, is not justified by the works of the law. So, my dear friends, we get to the conclusion that the Father's salvation plan to cleanse the stain of our sins and reconcile us to Him does not require. A good work. Our relationship with the Heavenly Father is made possible by the atoning death of Jesus Christ. Verse 16, we can come back there and it says very clear, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. We can go also this, this morning in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 2 said, For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. If we can read the scriptures, my dear friends, Paul believed nothing merit. His boasting more than the cross. 
in Galatians chapter 6 verse 14 said, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. What a wonderful expression. Galatians 6.14 said, But God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Wow. So, my dear friends, Paul believed nothing merits his boasting more than the cross. He had a good reason to think so. God's entire plan of salvation hangs up upon the cross where Jesus Christ was crucified. It is, it is through Jesus' sacrificial death that we are reconciled to our Heavenly Father. And my dear friend, we are justified by Christ's blood, free from the guilt and penalty of sin. If we open the Bible and we read the book of Ephesians 1, 7, said, In Him we have redemption. It's talking about, we're talking about Jesus Christ. He said, in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of His grace. What a wonderful. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So my dear friend, it is through Jesus Christ's sacrificial death that we are reconciled to, to our Father, our Heavenly Father. And we are justified by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, free from the guilt and penalty of sin. In the book of Romans, Romans chapter 5 verse 9 said, Much more, oh praise Jesus, hallelujah, much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. So my dear friends, in a few words, we learn something in this, in, in this morning, Sunday morning. By the works of the law, no flesh, I say no flesh, will be justified. That is, clean living, a clean living cannot earn God's acceptance. Let's think about that. Because if we come back to the, the to, to the text that we read in the in the beginning, verse 16 said, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. So that means that clean living cannot earn God's acceptance. Even so, many people choose to put confidence, I mean confidence, in some sort of cosmic, cosmic scale. What I mean with that, my dear friend, that even so, many people choose to put confidence in some sort of cosmic scale. They believe their good deeds, their good deeds will outweigh their bad deeds. And as a result, the gate of heaven will be open to them. But how wrong these people are, my friends. Because the Bible said very clear, my dear friend, much more than having now been justified by His blood, not by good deeds, but said by his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. 
But my dear friends, I believe that the gate of heaven will be open just to those who accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. However, if this is skill, philosophy were true, just let's think about, just let's think about, however, if this scale philosophy were true, so we get to the point to think about this, Jesus' death would be senseless. I say senseless. A father who accepts multiple paths to salvation, but is still sacrifice his son, could not be called a good or loving father. It is not true, my friends. But my dear friends, my fellow believers, and my fellow Americans, this morning the truth is this, my dear friends. In John 3.16, the Bible said, very clear, For God so loved the world that he gave his only, I mean his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, my friends. My dear friends, Let's think about that. If this is scale of philosophy were the true, Jesus Christ's death would be senseless. A father who accepts multiple paths to salvation but still sacrifice his son could not be called a good or a loving father. But my dear friend, John 14, 6, said very clear, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way, the true and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, the Lord said in the book of John 14, verse 6. Yet, <clears throat> so many overlook the obvious logic of such reasoning and cling to their vision of a God who ignores personal sin. My friends, our Heavenly Father, do not ignore our sins. Now, my friends, I will say this morning, this Sunday morning, the problem is pride. See, it is natural to desire acceptances. We desire to acceptance. People want to believe something between them. They want to believe what they want to believe, my friends. That doesn't mean it, it is true. My friends, the problem is pride since it is natural to desire acceptances just the way we are. People wants to believe. People wants to believe. Something between them is worth loving. I'm a nice guy. That's why God loves me, because I'm a nice guy. But my dear friends, the cross, the cross requires kneeling before God empty-handed, my friend. God wants you and God wants me just the way we are. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Yet so many overlook the obvious logic of such reasoning and claim to their vision of a God who ignores personal sin. But this is not true, my friends. In Matthew 16, 24, Jesus said to his disciples, very clear, my friends. The Bible said, Jesus Christ said, who says that? Jesus Christ said this. If anyone desire 
to come after me, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. This is the end, my friends. The problem is pride, since it's natural to desire acceptance. We love to be accepted the way we are. And sometimes, my dear friends, we said, I am who I am, and nobody is going to make me change. But the Bible said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The Lord said. And this Sunday morning, my friends, we can get to a great conclusion. When we humbly admit we are powerless, that we are sinners. My dear friend, in a humble way, we have to admit that we are powerless. We are sinners, my friends. Powerless to solve our own sin debt. We cannot solve it down by ourselves. We must accept the payment that Jesus Christ made for us on the cross. We have to accept that we are powerless to save us from hell. We need Jesus Christ. By all means, my friends. We have to accept the payment that Jesus Christ made for us on the cross. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, the Bible said, For I deliver it to you, First of all, that which I also received, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. It's no other way, my friends, but Jesus Christ's way. My dear friends, we have nothing to offer God, but the fact is this. The fact is this. He expects nothing from you. He expects nothing from you. Instead, the Father creates a salvation plan that cleanses the stain of our sins and reconciles us to Him. My dear friends, and this morning, the only way, the only way, the gate of heaven will be open to us is by accepting Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. If anyone there who doesn't know Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord and this morning, wants to make sure that the gates of heaven could be open for them, please just accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. Open your heart to Jesus and invite Jesus into your heart this morning. I will pray for you. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the offer of this salvation for free. I pray for everyone who listens into this ministry and listen into this sermon this morning. That you might touch them with power, Lord. That you might touch them and they come to you and accept you as a Savior and Lord. In Jesus Christ, I pray all. Oh. Thank you, my friends. I pray for you this morning. That before it's late, this morning you accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. God bless you. 
and God bless America. Because America is a wonderful place to live. God bless you and God bless America because this America is the American of my dream. Have a good day and enjoy this Sunday morning because God is with you. God is looking for you. God is calling you. God bless you. And God bless America. Have a good day.